in this world, we were taught so many bad things. We were taught things that goes against the wisdom of God. Things that go against the rules and regulations of God. So when we tried to come to God at first, it was really difficult. Because in truth, we have to purge all of that satanic, earthly propaganda, whatever that is within us so that we can have room for the wisdom of God. Some people believe that in order to be successful in life, you have to be self-focused. You have to work hard, you have to save your money, you have to mind your business. Like, you can't really have time for other people. So what happened, many of us, their minds, are pretty much on what Satan wants you to focus on. Let's go to Luke 6 and 38. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. To understand the Bible, you can't think in an earthly way. Earthly thinking, my Lord, you are not going to understand the concepts of the Bible. Look, we all know that God made this world. So since God made this world, why aren't we going by his rules? Why are we going by rules that are not from God? Why are we living this life contrary to the person who made this world? So if you want a good life, Why aren't you seeking knowledge or information from the person who made this world? Why are we seeking knowledge from a person or an entity that is against God? It is like, let's say that I made the first car and I am the only one that knows how to make a car. Why in the world would you seek out <laughs> advice from a person who doesn't know how to make a car? This is what people do. What we were taught is wrong. This earthly satanic stuff is wrong. We have to transition our minds to what the Bible is saying. If we don't, we are going to continue to fail. It doesn't matter how many cars you have, how many homes you have. Like I said, many people have much because we are living in the age of credit. And you have no idea, please listen, you have no idea what people are doing to make their money. You have no idea if they are a witch or in witchcraft, if they are making agreements with demons. 
So be very careful who you idolize or don't idolize anyone. Be careful of who you want to be or like because you have no idea how that person's life really is. You are on the outside looking in. When you do that, your perception is going to be off. Okay. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with all, it shall be measured to you again. So what is this saying? We have to understand that God is monitoring everything. I come to find out that the people that come down my path they are coming down my path for a reason. Usually it is because I am being tested. I come to find this out so often in my life. We have to understand that we are going to reap what we sow. Listen, man. If God wanted to, he can change this world really quickly. Every poor person, every poor person in this world, he could make rich really easily. Why doesn't he make everyone's life perfect on earth now. Why doesn't he do it? Can't God do anything? Yes. So why doesn't he make everything perfect right now? I believe I spoke about this in a other video. Why would he allow us to be in the same planet as Satan and demons? Why, why not make us all rich now? We are being tested. You see, if you don't understand that part there, Everything else really is not going to make too much sense. If you don't understand that standpoint there, you may believe that God is this tyrannical or this tyrant, this mean God. Each and every day, we have to become more and more like Jesus Christ every day. The way that this can happen is by testing us. The qualities that Jesus Christ have, we need to obtain those qualities. So in those categories, we are going to be tested in those categories. Please understand what I am saying. God wants you to do, God wants to do good things for you. But you have to follow his rules. I don't want to call it a game. because that is not going to sound right. I was going to say that you have to play the game, <laughs> but I don't want to call it a game. 
you have to. <laughs> you have to operate. Yes, you have to operate in this life that he wants. We have to play by the rules, not play. We have to live by his rules. So here it is telling you, like I said, God can make everyone rich and make everyone's life perfect. So why doesn't he? We are being tested. We have to become more like Jesus Christ every day. So to get what you want in life, you have to follow the rules. There are some people, and I have spoke with some people as well, that lack in life. They either are lacking money, lacking a place to stay, lacking this, lacking that. You have to play by the rules. When you choose to not play by the rules, let me say this. <laughs> Some people have told me <laughs> what their parents would do to punish them. So their parents would have rules for their kid or kids. If their kids would not follow the rules, what some parents would do is take the child's TV, video game, movies perhaps, and most likely ground the kid and make them stay in their room. Pretty much punish you and take away the good things that they gave to you. Okay, think of it like this. God is our parent. When we choose to do what he says, he is going to continue to bless our life. When we choose to not do what he says, he is going to begin to take away things from you. And from what I have been seeing, in my opinion, there are so many sick people, people that look healthy, people that are in good shape, but they have cancer and all this stuff here. What am I trying to say? Listen. Luke 6 and 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. Kevin, I am lacking in money. What can I do? What is happening? Okay. Luke 6 and 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Doesn't this follow the law of reaping and sowing? I believe so. So whatever you do, it is going to come back to you. Some people may say, well, Kevin, you know, I have bills, I have kids, I have this and I have that. Listen. <laughs> Give, and it shall be given unto you. It doesn't say give unless you have so much bills and kids and stuff like that. No, it is saying give, and it shall be given unto you. There is no special clause in there for people <laughs> that have bills and kids and stuff like that. It all comes down to believing 
and trusting in God. In an earthly sense, if you want more money, what you should do is save your money and pretty much look out for yourself. But you have been doing that, right? But you are still lacking. You have been looking out for yourself. You have been pretty much minding your own business, but you are still lacking. So, earthly logic, oops, <laughs> earthly logic is not working for you. Obviously, you are doing something wrong because if you have been working hard, if you have been saving, but still you are in lack, this is saying that you are doing something wrong. Give and it shall be given unto you. Don't you know For God to teach you something, he is going to take what you have from you so that it will humble you so that you can learn a lesson. The longer that it takes you to learn that lesson, the more that you are going to have to suffer. Of course, God is going to let some good things come to you, of course. But you are going to suffer until you learn that lesson. Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together. So the more you give the more you get back. And this is not only speaking about money because look, I'd rather have good health or continue to have good health other than a bunch of money. I'd rather have peace and happiness other than a bunch of money. I'd rather have God's favor, favor other than a ton of money. So this is not only speaking about money. I know some churches may read this and they may speak about money in this aspect. This is not only touching on money because there are much more important things than money. Like I always say, what is the point of money when you have no peace? How can you enjoy your life or your money when you have no peace? Okay. Let's go down here. For with, hmm, for with the same measure that ye met with all, it shall be measured to you again. So this is all following the rule of reaping and sowing or sowing and reaping. Whatever you do, it is going to come back you come back to you in some type of form. You can't always do good and say that no good comes back to you. That is impossible. If you are always doing good, good has no other choice but to come to you. When you are always doing bad, bad has no other choice but to come to you. Myself, I don't have a whole lot of anything really but I still give. Let me say this. I am receiving, and I am not saying money or anything like that, but I am receiving much more than what I put in. And that goes for almost everything. 
I am receiving back and I am not only speaking about money, but I am reaping back much more than what I put in. That is the truth. Now, back when I was in sin, I thought that I had to do bad things to make money. But I learned, <laughs> I learned this the hard way. When you do bad things to gain, you may not lose it all at that second or within that year, but you are going to lose everything. <laughs> you are going to lose what you gained because when you are in sin, your mind is not right. Demons are going to make you do something foolish and mess up your life further. I am telling you. So all that time being cunning and sneaky and all that stuff there, you are going to lose everything. This is why I choose to do the right thing. Because I know that, yes, I may get away with the bad things that I am doing, but soon... I have to pay back everything I have done wrong. I have to pay it back. As it is stating here in verse 38, if you give, it is going to come back to you. When you do evil, it is going to come back to you. So it works both sides. For with the same measure that ye met withal, it shall be measured to you again. So the same intensity, the same level of kindness, generosity that you give out, the same level or more, you are going to receive that back. And I am not saying it is always going to come back in the form of currency. I am not saying that. Because your health, listen, back when I was in sin, I believe I said this already, but I would always stay sick. Always. It was crazy how ill I was when I was in sin. Now, I don't really get sick. Pretty much the most, <laughs> I may get a runny nose. That is about it. Sometimes a sore throat, maybe a headache, but that's it. That's it. I don't get, <laughs> no. Back in the past, it was horrible. So I pray that this makes sense. If you are lacking, first of all, you have to follow the rules and regulations of the Bible, first of all. From there, be kind to people. Give to people. You can pretty much ask the people that I speak with. My mind and my heart is to help others in some type of way, either with what I am doing now. Because even when I am teaching to you now, I am giving, right? Giving doesn't mean money all the time. When you give, there are other categories of giving. When I am teaching to you, I am giving. 
When I am giving you food, I am giving. When I am helping you out in any type of way, I am giving. Giving doesn't mean money all the time. Money is one of many things that you can give to people. And I am not saying that you have to give to a mega church to a rich pastor or preacher. I am not saying that. You can give. It is much more beneficial to give to someone that is poor. I am not saying that it is wrong to give to a huge church, but they are rich or seem rich. Why not give to people that are hurting, that don't have a home, that don't really eat much? Think about that. If you are in lack, I pray that this makes sense. Yes, this may be a hard thing to do because you were trained in the wrong way. But when you begin to do it, it is going to become easier, easier, and easier. I am not saying that you have to give all your money away. It would be good, but I am not saying that you have to. I am not saying that you have to give away 50%, 50% of your income. I am not saying that. But give in some type of way. Give your time. That is not money, right? Your time. When you give, it shall be given unto you. Obviously, working two and three jobs, it's not working for you. Because if you still lack when you are working two or three jobs, what is that telling you? You are under a curse. Why are you under a curse? Perhaps you are not following God's rules and regulations. How about start now? That would make the most sense there, I believe. Give and it shall be given unto you, my Lord. I am a witness to this. The way that things are going for me now, I would not have imagined what is happening to me now to ever happen. Never, never in a million years. Never. I am being... I pray that this makes sense. Back when I was in sin, I struggled. I struggled so much. My life was really, really hard back when I was in sin. I would work so much and get sick. My Lord, I would cry and be depressed. Those days are over. I am following God's rules now. Yes, I may have bad days, but it is nothing close to what I suffered back when I was in sin. Not even close. This simple, my Lord, this is really simple. This is basic. This is basic. This is simple. Give. Give, as I always tell you all, give to your enemies. Give to people that get on your nerves. Easy ways to get blessed. Give to people. Even if those people don't appreciate 
<laughs> what you are doing for them, do it anyways, because it is benefiting you, largely. I am telling you principles that I do, that I know that works. I know this works because I do this every day of my life. I give something. I give something of myself every day. And this is why I am blessed by God. Am I saying that I am rich? No. I don't want to be rich because I may turn my back on God and what good is my money if I go to hell? Skip that. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless you.